Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the newest edition of the Ross Rundown. I'm your host, Matt Harrelson, alongside with me, as usual, Brand Paul. What's up, Brand? Good, good, good. Um, I'm disappointed, though, and I'll tell you why. We had a Super Bowl this past weekend, and it was awful. And I don't know how else to describe it, but it was uh, very forgettable. Yes. I guess is the way to put it. So... First off, before we get into some uh, specific questions, of course, congratulations mm-hmm. to the New England Patriots That's for their right. 115th Super Bowl That's victory. Right. Uh, but overall, what were your thoughts about the game? A buddy of mine tried to talk me into liking it. He called me Monday and because I had maybe made a social media post about how bad it was. Right. And he called and told me how, how I was wrong. And he said, you know, it sounded like a pitcher's duel in baseball. And I said... Mm-hmm. Okay, I guess if you want to see it that way. I said there was some really good defense. I said, but on the other hand, really bad, bad offense. Golf yeah. just looked overwhelmed to me. He did. We're going to get to that here in okay. a second. Now, I'm a baseball purist, mm-hmm. if you will. Mm-hmm. I like pitcher's duels. I do too. But to I me, mean, football is not meant to be a I, pitcher's duel. I agree. A 3 nothing <laughs> football game yeah. is entirely different than a 2-1 to one baseball game. Correct. Absolutely. And people want to see – first of all, they mm-hmm. want to see a tight game, which mm-hmm. we got. But mm-hmm. they want to see offense. They yeah. want to see – one yeah. or two big plays right. that, that turns the game one way or the other. Mm-hmm. And quite frankly, we just didn't see no, any of that was, on it Sunday. Was just hard to watch. Yeah. So, uh, you know, m- mostly by now everybody knows the Pats won 13-3. Mm-hmm. to three. Right. Looking at the box score, it was 3-3 three to three going into the fourth quarter. Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, awesome. you know, I got to say, I saw where Trey Wingo was on ESPN, like, saying people don't need to say that it was boring. It was a great defensive game. But it was boring. I love somebody telling me what to think, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was boring though. I don't know how else you describe I did, it. I didn't enjoy it. Nobody in the house of twenty that I was in enjoyed yeah. the game. Yeah, not it one was, person uh, that enjoyed it. The the game was boring. I thought the commercials were underwhelming. Mediocre. The the halftime show turned into Magic Mike. Yeah, that's uh, right. I, you know, I'm sure my wife liked it. Right, exactly. Um, but but, but I, I, I didn't care for I've it. I've been saying <laughs> I should have opened up the show this way. Pats thirteen, Rams three, Maroon five. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but let's get into some specifics. So talk about golf here. Do you think, uh, you know, we talked last week about mm-hmm. would we see uh, him uh, fluster a little bit to start mm-hmm. with. We obviously saw yep. that. Do you think there was all the pressure finally called up to him? It had to, man. He just he just never – I mean, there were there were moments he had people open yeah. and just held onto the ball too long and, and either took a sack – or end up having to throw the ball away, yeah, because he just held on to the ball and didn't and didn't trust himself almost, like he was a little timid. Yeah, and I can't remember when it was, but there was one play where he was getting ready to get sacked, and he basically just took a knee. Mm-hmm. If you remember that, yeah, I do. And I remember watching that, thinking, "My gosh, he's already given up," kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, he, he and, has. And Tony Romo, who was one of the the uh, analysts, first of all, hit the nail on the head so many times as he's done yeah. throughout the yeah. season. But he was talking about. Uh, about golf and about how during some certain plays, for instance, uh, a a seasoned, experienced quarterback, mm-hmm. Super Bowl, playoffs, regular season, whatever, would step up to give himself some time or move, mm-hmm. make the pocket move. Yeah. Um, and we saw where golf a lot of times uh, the the Patriots made it seem like there was pressure on him, mm-hmm. even if there wasn't, and it flustered him. Mm-hmm. And there were times where he let the ball go before he needed yeah. to. Happy feet. I yeah. mean, just a, just a real, real out of character for the way he's played this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, with that, let's move into the Rams offense mm-hmm. in general. Now, obviously the Rams have been one of the most high-powered offenses mm-hmm. all season long, but the Pats just like they did with the Chiefs who were also mm-hmm. a high-powered mm-hmm. offense, neutralized them. That's right. Uh, it was just truly amazing to see. I mean, the pa- kudos to the Patriots defense by the way cuz they yeah. did play great. Yeah. I mean, we talked about Bill Belichick and how you give him 2 weeks to prepare for anybody. He's just a master. But, you know, McVay, I thought, would counter with something. Yeah. And it just never happened. Yeah, well, actually, my next question was, did Sean McVay get outcoached? Oh, without a doubt. (laughs) Without a doubt. He even – I think he even came out and admitted that he got outcoached. Did he really? Yeah, 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 in the media. Because what was was he going to say? At least he's mad enough to admit that he got outcoached. And he's 33 years old. I mean, so – so He did. And, and, you know, with the Rams – being so young, mm-hmm. McVay being so young, I fully expect them to be back. Oh, yeah. not, maybe not in the Super Bowl, but be back in the playoffs mm-hmm. perennially. Oh, yeah. I, I really don't think going forward this is going to be one of those teams like the Falcons team from a few years ago where you never see them in the Super Bowl again. Right. I really think they are built to be good for a while. Yeah. Now, let's talk about, again, the offense. So, golf was 19 of 38, mm-hmm. 229 yards, no touchdowns, one pick. So, nothing really to write home no. about. 
Um, the uh, that New England defense was able to sack him four times for 31 yards, but his rating was only 58. So. Yeah, he was. I mean, and that interception was awful. Yeah, I mean, you did that. He just throw threw you it up there. He did. Yeah, and Gilmore. I mean, anybody could have yeah, caught that. That's right. Uh, however, I do have to say, Tom Brady's numbers weren't much better. He was 21 of 35 for 262 yards, also no touchdowns, also one pick. Yeah. However, he was only sacked one time. He just, I mean, he just finds a way. There's such a difference when it's second and six or whatever, and you've got pressure, and you find a way to get rid of the ball even if it's incomplete. Yeah. And you get you set yourself up in third and six. Then you're second and six, and you take a sack, and you're third and 12. Yeah. And that's what Goff seemed to do. And Brady just kept finding Edelman to keep drives extended and just, I mean, didn't have a spectacular game. Sure. But every time he needed to play, Edelman was there. Yeah, the numbers, as far as Brady's numbers, don't show it. But Brady did what Brady does. That's right. He finds the open man. He gives himself time in the mm -hmm. pocket if he needs to. He basically yeah. went the whole game without being touched. Yeah. Again, kudos kudos to their yeah. offensive line because yeah. I think he was only sacked one time yeah, in I the entire that, I think that sack run. was the only one. It yeah. is, yeah. yeah that's, it was amazing, the offensive line, the job they did. Absolutely. And then, again, for the Patriots' defense, you know, the whole time people were like, where is Todd Gurley? Mm. Even when he came in, he only had 10 carries for 35 yards. Yeah. C.J. Anderson, who's kind of replaced him a little bit over the mm -hmm. last few weeks, not much better, seven carries, 22 yards, yeah. no touchdowns. Um, and even the, the Rams receiving, Brandon Cooks had a good game. Mm -hmm. Eight re uh, receptions, 120 yards, but as we know, no touchdowns. Right. Was it him in the end zone that got that ball s slapped away when he had went up in the back of the end zone? I think it was. I think it was. And, 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 and you that, know what? That recovery by McCourty was awesome. If that was the play where, if I, if we're talking about the same one, where if golf would have thrown it That's right. a second earlier, uh -huh. it was an easy yeah, touchdown. He, he was open, yeah. and, and he held on to the ball too long, and then Jason McCourty, I think it was, made a great recovery to make up the distance and get the ball knocked out. But, I mean, he again, if he holds, let's go the ball a split second longer. That's, I mean, a split second earlier is probably a touchdown. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the uh, the Patriots offense. Now, mm -hmm. Sony Michelle had the lone touchdown mm -hmm. for anybody, yep. but he also had 18 carries, 94 yards. Now, as we know now, Julian Edelman, 10 receptions, 141 yards, yep. no touchdowns, became the MVP. Yep. However, should he have won the MVP? That's debatable. I mean, we were sitting there talking about that during the game. I, I was told a buddy of mine when we were watching, maybe somebody, who do you think is going to win? I said, maybe somebody on the defense. But, you know, the Patriots defense was outstanding. But if you look across the board, there's not maybe one player on the defense right. that had eye-popping stats. There's just a collective unit. So I guess you had to give it to somebody. Sure. I mean, and Edelman, Michelle, either one of them, I guess. I mean, I would have been shot had to given it to Brady. I mean, yeah. I, yeah and so. Um, Brady Brady but, didn't need it. Yeah, somebody um, somebody had to win it. And I guess Edelman's as good as anybody. Sure. Um for the longest time, John and I, who do Good Morning Sand mm -hmm. Hills, were yep. watching the game together, and we were ready to give the MVP to the Rams punter, yes. Johnny Hecker. If they had won, oh my gosh. Yeah. And I don't know if that's ever happened, if the kickers won the MVP. Are you shocked they didn't fake any? Uh, well, you know, I don't know, because Hecker was, I mean, he nailed him inside the 20 yeah, I mean, several times. I mean, I, I, Hecker's, they fake more than anybody in the NFL. Yeah. And I, I thought maybe they might pull one out of the bag when they got desperate, yeah. but maybe he, was, maybe he just thought Belichick would be anticipating it. Perhaps, and, yeah. and again, that goes down yeah. to the Patriots yeah. and Belichick being so That's prepared right. when it comes That's to right. games like this. Um, but, of course, you know, nobody that loses is going to get the, the MVP, right. so obviously that counts Hecker out. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. Would it have been possible for them to just make the entire defense for the Patriots the I'd, MVP? You know, I'd, I'd tell you what, the whole defensive line or the second – or somebody. Yeah. I mean, because I know one year Cowboys had co-MVPs in the Super Bowl right. back in the 70s with two defensive linemen. So so maybe something like that would have been apropos because the, the Patriots' defensive line was just outstanding. Yeah. Um, and, and, look, Edelman was a fine choice. Mm -hmm. If I was giving it yep. to an offensive player, I yep. would have given it to Sonny yep. Michelle because yep. he had a he great had the, game he had and the had the, the only touchdown. And usually yep. if that's the case, it's whoever scored. You know? That's right. And and uh, most of his yards, I think, came in the second half yeah. when they put the game away and he got the touchdown to put it away. You know who else would have been a good candidate for MVP? Who? Bill Belichick. I thought you were going to say Adam Levine. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Although I do like Maroon 5, but no, no. Uh, the Belichick would have been, or the, I saw I saw somebody write that the defensive coordinator that took a job the next day. Yeah, the yeah, Patriots, yeah. He, he would have been a good choice. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, a couple of more questions here. Right. So the Pats won. I know mm -hmm. I've asked you and Jeremy this several times, but now that they've won, is Gronk done? I think he's done now. I said no last week. 
I'm going to stand by that, but it won't surprise me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I feel the same way. Now, I watched part of the parade. Gronk was being Gronk. Uh-huh. Uh, I probably had yeah. a few cocktails yeah, before, no, they, no. <laughs> before, they got, before they got on the duck boat. Um, I'm with you. I could see it going either way, yeah. and I would imagine he probably won't make that decision until we get further into the year, maybe yeah. even closer to training yeah, camp. Yeah, probably see what his body feels like. Yeah, I mean, because I'm, he came out after the game and said, look, my body is in mm-hmm. bad shape right mm-hmm. now. And, uh, you know, he, obviously he's had an injury-riddled history. Yeah. But he's also had a great career, and real quick, snap judgment. Hall of Famer? I knew you were going to ask me that today. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, stats, I would say no because of injury, injury history, but, but I don't know, man. I, 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 there, it's hard to find anybody better over the last decade. I would say yes. Yeah, and I, matter I, of fact, just like I do with baseball, I really didn't think – it really didn't take me very long to think yeah, about it. So. Um, I know if you compared his stats to like you know the Tony Gonzalez's of yeah. the world, the the uh, who else, uh, Antonio Gates, or even Witten. I mean, Witten Jason had great, Witten, Witten had yeah. great stats. Is going to be first ballot, but is Witten really a better hall, um, tight end? Exactly. Than now no. he's got better numbers now, as we know. Gronk has at least two. Uh, Super Bowl yep. victories, and he three. has probably double the amount of touchdowns as somebody like Witten. And, and exactly, and you never had the game plan around Witten as great as he was. And I'm a Cowboy fan, right? but opposing defenses didn't sit up at night saying, God, what am I going to do to stop Jason Witten? Right, yeah. And, and, and that, but they did that with Gronkowski. Well, and, and you look at um, Brady since he's had Gronk. It seems like his wide receivers have come and gone. Mm-hmm. Gronk's been there. He's yep. always been his security right. blanket. And I think that there's something to be said about yep. that. Another thing I'm interested to see is, Five, ten years from now, Patriots that – I mean, there's guys on this team that have, like, four Super Bowl rings mm-hmm. that you might not even realize it. Yeah. And I'm wondering if some of those guys will get extra consideration to the Hall of Fame simply because well, they have so many rings as part of this dynasty. Well, I will draw a comparison. 70s teams of the Steelers right. and 70s teams of the Cowboys. M- much, Many more of those Steelers players are in the Hall of Fame as, a, as opposed to the Cowboys players from those 70s teams, and they were both great teams – Probably the two teams of the decade. <clears throat> yeah. And and the Steelers, like Stallworth and Swan, their stats are real similar to like Drew Pearson and places like that. And they're both in the hall. Drew Pearson's not. So I would say if it, when it comes down to the voters' minds in 10 years, that's going to weigh on it. I, th- I think. I'm glad you brought that up. <clears throat> Here's how I break down the NFL mm-hmm. as far as dynasties. Mm-hmm. You had Steel Curtain in the 70s. Mm-hmm. You had – uh, Montana, Steve Young, 49ers yep. oh, yeah. in the 80s. You had the Cowboys in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Since then, you've had the New England Patriots. Now, they've tied now the Steelers for yep. six Super Bowls yep. overall. Yep. Now, all of those have come in the brady Belichick era, mm-hmm. whereas the Steelers won some back in the day. They've mm-hmm. also won at mm-hmm. least one with Ben Roethlisberger, they if not won two. two. He's won two. Uh-huh. So, my last question before we move on. How much longer can the Pats dynasty last? As long as Brady keeps playing and Belichick keeps coaching. I think that's the easy answer, yep. isn't it? As it's pretty long, simple. As long as they're there and Brady, his, in his own words, is going to play till he sucks and Brady's going to keep winning till he sucks. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, we talked about it last week mm-hmm. that uh, Robert Kraft already said, look, we're interested in, in extending yep. uh, Brady. Yep. For one, to, to give him some, some relief cap-wise. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, the guy's obviously yep. still got it. And, yep. you know, yep. I've had people ask me, well, do you think he'll re- Brady will retire after winning the Super Bowl? And I'm thinking – I doubt it because I could see where you'd want to go out on top. Mm-hmm. However, if you're still the best in the business at age 41 yep. or age 61, yep. you want to keep playing, I, right? I think he's going to play until they cannot win the Super Bowl with him anymore. Yeah. I think he's going to keep on. And, I, I, and unfortunately, I think we'll see a day where they'll have a season and Brady will finally hit that wall. Yep, and they'll, and they'll say, head on too long. Yeah, and they'll go 5-11. and 11, and That's exactly what will happen. Uh-huh. However, anybody that says that's an idiot. Yeah, that's right. I agree. <laughs> um, I, I mean, keep playing. Who are we to tell him how long to play? Exactly. And it, like, keep playing as long as you can do it, man. And you know what? Great I mean, player. as long as he stays upright and doesn't have any major injuries That's right. and they continue to keep playmakers around him, mm-hmm. Belichick sticks around. I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but could Brady play until he's 50? I mean, he's 41 now. That's a long shot. But I, I, I would say 50 is a stretch. All right, well, about, well, 45. I think then. he can do 45. Yeah. I mean, these days, yeah. training is so advanced and mm-hmm. guys can stay in great shape yeah. longer. I That's think right. it's, it's, not, it's not like when I was growing up, you know, 30 and 30, <clears throat> between 30 and 35 was old. No. I mean, you see players holding on a lot longer now. 
And there's so much more emphasis on player safety, but especially mm. quarterback that's safety. That's right. And I think that's one of the reasons that's why right. him, oh, Breeze, yeah. these guys have been able to stick oh, around. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Phillip Rivers, Eli. Makes a huge difference. Absolutely. So. All right, so that's going to do it for the Super Bowl. Of course, you and I were correct in our picks. That's right. Jeremy's not here. However, that's not going to stop Jeremy, me from you were smack wrong. talking. <laughs> you were wrong. You got it wrong this year. Of course, you got it right with the Eagles last that's year. That's right. However, just like I said uh, last week, stick with the Patriots till they prove otherwise. That's right. And uh, they were able to get it done over the less experienced yep. Rams team. Yep. So, But, again, congratulations yep. to the Patriots. Number six, uh, going to go down. And Brady's starting to run out of fingers. That's right. <laughs> Uh, matter of fact, rings. one other quick thing. I don't know if you're a Marvel uh, I am. fan. I, I, I saw a meme that had Brady, and he had the Infinity Gauntlet on. He <laughs> said he's got all six now, and the rest of the NFL is about to go away with the snap. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, now that Super Bowl football is over, that means baseball. Yay, right around baseball. the corner. That's right. So, there are some MLB and MLB Player Association rule changes that are being discussed, mm -hmm. and I find a lot of them interesting. So there are two, four, six, there's eight of them. Okay. So let's run through them real right. quick. I want to get your opinion on right. them, see what you think. So the first one, uh, a lot of these, first of all, have to do with speeding the game up, okay. which obviously they've been trying to do for mm -hmm. a while. So first off would be a three batter minimum for pitchers. Obviously, meaning that uh, you know how we see mm -hmm. there's, yeah, there's yeah. specialists. Mm -hmm. You know, for each one guy comes in, throws uh, you know six pitches, comes mm -hmm. out. So they're trying to help speed up the game, less pitching uh, visits to the mm -hmm. mound, three batter minimum. What do you think? I don't like it. I don't either. <laughs> let, 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 let the managers manage the game. Yeah. I mean, I mean. <clears throat> to yeah. me, to me. Now look, we're we're both National League uh -huh. fans. National League is different from the That's American right. League, and this is part of why. Uh -huh. uh, I like the fact. I know it's. I know it slows the game down, but baseball is to me is baseball is a leisurely, yes. enjoyable game. It's pastime. That the ones that it's love baseball to pass the time. don't turn it off because it takes too long. Exactly, and I, because of that, there is you know with with there being no DH, which mm -hmm. we're going to hit on here in just mm -hmm. a minute. There is a lot more thinking and mm -hmm. strategy That's into right. well, is the guy coming up? Is he in the batter in the batter's box? Is he left-handed or right-handed? Mm -hmm. Is the guy behind him left-handed or right-handed? Right. Uh, you know, if they decide to make a change, we need to make a change. Right. I think this would give, uh, if they were to implement this, would give the offense a little bit of an advantage, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Because I hundred percent agree. Yeah, because obviously a lefty versus could, lefty, you could just stack your lineup exactly to. to, to um, to negate the other team's bullpen. Exactly. So that's one I hope doesn't yeah. doesn't come yeah. to fruition. Yeah. Another one I hope isn't is the universal DH. Oh, I hate that. A universal no DH. I'd go the exact opposite. I agree. Uh, I've never been a fan of the DH. Uh, of course, again, we're both National League right. fans, so we're a little biased. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I know yeah. we talked last week about how great Edgar Martinez was. That's right. If the American League wants to keep it, fine. That can be the that's junior right. circuits thing. But as far as the yeah, National right. League, keep it like it is. Uh, the National League is so much more like I strategizing. I love seeing Madison Bumgarner hitting bombs. Yeah. Who, doesn't, who doesn't like to see that? And yeah, and again, part of the, the strategy part of it is one of the things I love about baseball. That's right. And I feel like if you just put a DH in there for every team, I understand baseball wants more runs being scored, more mm -hmm. home runs being hit because that's good for ratings. Take steroids. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, <laughs> look now, we can, get, we can get back into I'm that kidding. conversation. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, if I, I feel like if you ask anybody yeah. uh, that's a National League team fan, they're going to yeah. say, "Nope, no yeah. DH." Yeah. Uh, here's one that's interesting: a single trade deadline before the All Star break. Not sure I hate that. And I think what they're trying to do, you know, right now there's the there's the the trade yeah. deadline that's actually after the All Star mm -hmm. break, and then there's the one that ends at the end of August. Mm -hmm. Where, and, we, and you just. Players dump teams dumping salaries and yeah. stuff. You have to pass I, I through waivers. Yeah, but uh, I, I I don't know. I, I'm I I'd be okay with a single trade deadline. I don't like it before the All Star break. Yeah, though. that's just that's me. The medium. Yeah, that's a happy medium. I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, moving forward, they also want to implement and have been trying to do this for quite a while a twenty second pitch clock. Good luck with that. First I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. I hate that one. Um, for the ones that are not purists like me and you, um, to speed it up a little bit. But, I mean, I, my wife has come full circle on baseball. And I'll give you a real quick example because sure. I don't want to talk all night about this. But but um, my wife used to talk about how boring baseball was. Okay. And I said, what you have to do is you have to consider every pitch is like the play clock in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Every pitch is a play. Mm -hmm. And something big could happen. Now, more often than not in baseball, something big doesn't have to happen on every play. Right. But that's the way – I mean, that's – so 20 seconds is – I don't know if they make that work. 
Yeah, we Scott Emerson came on. Uh, I think it was our very first RO Sports Show, and I asked him about this because mm-hmm. they had talked about yeah. implementing this last year. And him being a pitching coach mm-hmm. at that level, I thought, who better to ask? Yeah, that's right. And, and you know, he was like. He wasn't a huge fan of it. Mm-hmm. He, he understands what they're trying to do. They're trying mm-hmm. to speed up the game. But he said kind of the same mm-hmm. thing, that each pitch is a chess match. And the, right. whole, the whole at bat is a chess match. Right. And you're trying to think two pitches ahead mm-hmm. of that guy or three pitches or whatever it is. And uh, I feel like if you put a, a pitch clock at all, no matter yeah. what the time is, yeah. you're, you're speeding that up. That's guys right. are going to have to make those decisions quicker. That might not necessarily be a bad thing, but again – I just like baseball I mean, the like way it is. Up, that's right. I, I mean, Matt, you look at the great ones like Maddox. How, what a great thinker he was. If you ever yeah. go back and look at his documentaries when he talks about how he just could think ahead months and, and remember re, recall bats from months and, and back. Sure. To, to and, and that's uh, baseball to me. Not knocking other sports, but because I love all sports, baseball is the thinking man's game. Absolutely, and I, I love it. Um, and the thing with this is. I, I could actually be on board with them saying, all right, the pitcher after every pitch should, doesn't need to walk around That's the right. mound. And, That's right. You can you know, eliminate some of that stuff. Just the same way that they're trying to keep guys to stay in the batter's box mm-hmm. instead of doing the, the Derek yeah. Jeter no more thing where they yeah. do this 20 times in yeah. a bat. Um, however, the the batters were supposed to stay in the in the box this year, and mm-hmm. the umps did not. They didn't, they didn't enforce, enforce that nope. at all. Nope. Um, so we'll have to see how that yep. goes moving forward. Uh, another one here, not as big of a deal, an expansion of the rosters to 26 men with a 12-pitcher max. And I actually like this because the more pitchers, the better, That's right? That's right. That's right. And, 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 and for the MLBPA, I'm sure they love that because of more jobs. Absolutely, um, yeah. So I like it. In baseball, you can never have enough That's pitching. right. That's so, right. Um, uh, here's one that I find interesting, and I may actually be on board with this one. Draft advantages for winning teams and penalties for losing teams. And this is trying to keep teams from tanking, basically. Oh. Yeah. Gotcha. So, for like, instance, I guess uh, like the Braves, for instance, went 90-72 right. and 72 this year. Mm-hmm. So they would get some kind of advantage when it comes draft time, whereas a team – that tanked like uh, I don't know the White Sox, for or, instance, or the Marlins dumping salary. Marlins yeah, is a right. great example. Yeah. Well, they might have to inf- enforce some penalties on that's them right. for tanking. I don't. I, lo- I love it because I hate the thought of tanking to get a draft pick. Hate yeah. it. However, with that being said, we just saw the Braves do this two years ago, three years ago. Now, when it comes to baseball, mm-hmm. I feel like. It, it, everything's cyclical. You, you're you great for a few years. Mm-hmm. You have what they call a window mm-hmm. that you try to take uh, you know advantage of. And then usually what happens is, if, especially if you're a small or mid-market team, all of your guys become too expensive. That's right. So you have to break it down and start all over. Yeah, yeah. Now, we see that all the time. Kansas City Royals is a great That's example. Right. Four years ago, they had all these great young players. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, they can't afford the Eric Hosmers and the Alex mm-hmm. Gordons and, and all these guys. So they had to start trading yep. them, and they broke it down. And I would think that their their step plan now is to start building up again. Yep. The Cubs, same way. That's right. The Braves, hopefully, the same That's way. That's right. However, for teams like the Marlins, and they are the best example because yep. they've won, what, two World Series and then had a fire yeah, sale right, right afterwards. It's just, it's, just, it's truly amazing. I don't like that at all. I don't either. That To me, that's yeah. a little different. Yep. So. Uh, anyway, moving forward, they're actually going to have a study to lower the pitching mound. Now, it was before my time, but I know Bob Gibson very well. My dad talks mm-hmm. about him all the time. Mm-hmm. 1968, he blew everybody away, and the next year they lowered the mound mm-hmm. <laughs> because pitchers had too much of an advantage. I really don't feel like this was, is going to change anything. Yeah, though. was offense that much ahead of pitching last year? I didn't feel like it was. I, I, I truly thought there were a lot of games where there was a lot of good pitching. I don't, see, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's necessary. First of all, and I don't know if they did it. If it, it would change anything anyway. But you know, now at least right now, and again, baseball is cyclical when it comes to these sort of things. When I was growing up, you were taught to swing like you're chopping a tree. Mm-hmm. Now they teach them to swing up because there's cut. exit velocity mm-hmm. and stat cat, all that stuff. Yep. I don't really know yep. all that. But they teach them to. It's almost like, look, either you know, knock it out of the park or strike, or strike out. out. Players are, strikeouts are not even frowned upon anymore. No, but however, as I mentioned earlier, uh, MLB wants more offense. They want mm-hmm. more home runs. I'm not sure lowering the mound gets that done, no, does it? Sure. I, I don't. Because if the ball's how. lower, yeah. for instance, yeah. uh, you know, on average, that's a good point. Guys aren't going to be able to chip it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, so, I think that's a good point. Yeah, I don't think they need to lower the mount. I mean, it's yeah. been 40 years, 50 years. It's yeah. been fine. So, yeah. And then finally, a rule that would allow two-sport amateurs to sign major league contracts. Now, I don't know this for sure. 
I'm going to call this the Kyler Murray rule, though. Yeah. <laughs> now, personally, I have no problem yeah. with this. If you want to, if you, if you're good enough, if you're a Kyler Murray, we don't know yet if he's good mm-hmm. enough. A Dion, a Brian Jordan, some of these guys that are able to do both sports, mm-hmm. I say have at it. That's right? right. I don't have a problem with two sports. Did you see the documentary on Dion? I did not. No. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, I bet it on, was on, when he did the two in the same day. Yeah. Um, so I don't have a problem with athletes doing two, two at a time. I did see him on the NFL 100 commercial, which was about the only one worth a flip during the Super Bowl. I missed that one. Oh man, they had a it was a Super Bowl or it was a, a Super Bowl commercial, and it had like all these players from uh-huh. the past, even the present. Uh-huh. And uh, the way it started was there was a Roger Goodell was up there. It was like a award ceremony uh-huh. type thing. Well, there was a cake that had an NFL gold football on uh-huh. top of it. Marshawn Lynch. We all know mm-hmm. he's a mess. Mm-hmm. Tries to reach it, puts his hand through the cake. The ball tumbles to the ground. Well, somebody yells, fumble! And all these guys start yeah. running over the ball and trying to grab it. Next thing you know, they're, like, throwing passes and all that. Dion was in there and did the whole, you know, high-stepping okay. thing. It was great. Oh, but Cool. Uh, yeah. Um, I miss that one. I'm- I think maybe – the only downside to this is, let's say that, uh, let's say Kyler Murray ends up playing baseball for the A's and mm-hmm. then gets drafted by, I'll just say the Redskins because mm-hmm. that's actually been talked about. Mm-hmm. If I'm either one of those organizations, especially the A's, I'd be worried about him getting injured mm-hmm. and then not being able to which, contribute. Which is a distinct possibility. I mean, sure. we saw what happened to Bo Jackson. Right. Yeah, another gonna, great yeah, example. Yeah. Um, but I think teams that – would draft a player with this rule was in place would be knowing that going in and they were sure. taking that chance. They so, would. I mean, and, they and, would I, take. and perhaps there are some precautions you can put into their contract yeah. that says, you know, or take insurance out That's on right. something like that. Yeah. So I got no problem with Maybe that. Maybe reduce their salary cap hit if that happens where yeah. they can Absolutely. Where, where you can replace them. So the next CBA runs out in 2021. Now I don't know if any of this is they're going to try to implement it for this season. I seriously doubt it. Mm-hmm. Um, because the season, the pitchers and catchers report literally in a week. I know, amazing. Which is great. Training baseball. It's great. However, that brings us to our next topic here, and that is the fact that Bryce Harper and Manny Machado are still without jobs. Now, look. Two people that Trump has not found jobs for. (laughs) (laughs) Well, now, Manny's an immigrant, so he might not get one. Uh, but I just think that it's crazy that there's been no takers so far. And I know there's been some rumors. Yeah. You know, the Padres had yep. a meeting with them. The Giants mm-hmm. have been rumored now to come yep. out of the woodwork. Yeah. I think I read that there are at least like eight teams that have talked to yep. Bryce. However, let me ask you this. Should they, both of these guys, try to sign a short-term deal? Maybe like what a, happens with CBA? Well, just maybe, or maybe just like a... Uh, a one-year deal worth thirty million, mm-hmm. or a two-year deal worth seventy million, something like that, and then come back and see how it looks in a couple uh, of years. Uh, it's not a bad idea for on, on their part, and somebody would give it to them. Yeah, I feel like if you did that, you more teams would open up their checkbooks. I feel like the Yankees would might go after both of them. They might, um, and um, I and I think you know, right? Like I said, there's eight teams rumored to be after Bryce. I feel like that would double. Oh yeah, uh, without know? a doubt. I heard um, Aaron Judge say he would love to have yeah. Um, Harper on a team. Yeah, he said he would change positions. Yeah. Um, and, and I think my next question, talking about the CBA in 2021, which I'm afraid we're headed towards a stoppage mm. oh, because yeah. there's been too much peace. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but it's could, been a long time. could this be the norm we see moving forward until 2021 where these guys that, you know, five years ago you would thought, oh, man, they're going to get $500 million, mm. and now it seems like they're being stalled out a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't know. I would certainly wouldn't call it collusion because owners have the right nah, to do what they want nah, to do. No, I wouldn't call um, it that. But, um, but uh, it certainly seems like the owners are trying to draw a little line in the sand here and say, you know, we're just not going to sign to those big, massive, long-term deals anymore. Yeah. And we'll have to see what new CBA brings. And they have that right. Yeah. Um, however, Mike Trout, is due to hit free agency, not next year, not this year, but next year. Mm -hmm. I have to think CBA or no CBA, Mm -hmm. he's going to break all the records, Uh, right? Come on, Atlanta. (laughs) Well, we'd have to mortgage the whole future for that. Oh, my gosh, Uh, I love Trout. But I love Trout, too. Already a Hall of Famer, in my opinion. Uh, And, you know, there were people talking. Right now, Stanton has the largest contract, $325 million over 10 years, which is a lot of money. Now, there were a lot of people that thought both Bryce and Machado were going to blow that out of the mm-hmm. water. It and doesn't it seem like we're going to see that exactly. However, I feel like if there was anybody, not only that was going to get paid, but it's worth that kind of mm-hmm. money, it's got to be Trout, right? Oh, yeah, because he, he'll pack out. I mean, he'll pack he'll put $2 million a year in attendance. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and the thing I hate about it is, you know, he, he, he came up with the Angels. They've only made the playoffs one time. Mm-hmm. They've basically wasted the first six yep. years of his, of his right. career. Which is a shame, and which, yeah. which, which is going to – 
come I think it's gonna play into where he signs Absolutely. When, when his deal comes up because I, I think if the Angels are not serious about winning, I think he'll I think he'll bolt. Yeah. And another problem you run into, like the Angels have money. Art Moreno mm-hmm. throws money around. I mean, That's look right. what they gave Pujols. They're That's gonna right. be paying him until he's sixty. And, yeah, he's not sixty already. <laughs> well he's close. <laughs> uh, but you know, I'm not so sure that they could afford Trout and then still be able to fill a team out around him. And That's that may right. be an issue for a lot of teams yeah, considering maybe. how much he wants mm-hmm. or will want. Yeah. So anyway, let's move forward. Done with baseball. Of course, as I mentioned, pitchers and catchers report in a, in a week. week. So woo! And uh, we'll try to get Scott back on the show at some point as well. Let's move to Tobacco Road and talk some college basketball. Now, uh, let's start with Duke. <clears throat> Duke currently is eight and one in the ACC. They are twenty and two overall. I believe yeah. they currently sit number two overall in yeah. the country. They've had six wins in a row, including beating uh, was at the time number four Virginia seventy two to seventy at home. Now, their next matchup is at Virginia, and mm-hmm. that's going to be on Saturday. So, first of all, <clears throat> I don't know how much college basketball you've got no, a chance to watch. I watched but a pretty good bit this year. How impressive is Duke? Oh, my gosh. And I say this with this shirt yeah, on. I, I, I so <laughs> want Zion Williamson to, to, to sit out uh, <laughs> and get ready yeah, for the draft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Golly. Well, we, won't, well, we only have to worry about him until March. Then right. he's gone. That's so. right. <laughs> uh, that's right. Uh, he, they are just really, really good. I mean, love them or hate them, and I lean towards hate them. Sure. Um, they are just really good, and that's an understatement. I, I do have to say, I am going to go out on a bit of a limb here and say Virginia is going to beat them Saturday. And, as you say, it's in Virginia. It's in yeah. Charlottesville, and the last score, 72-70, to 70, Duke won. So they just barely won yep. at home. And Virginia's better offensively than they were last year. They so. are, but deep, they're known for their defense. Yep. If you can score more than 60 points on them, mm-hmm. you're probably going to win, that's right. as we see here. Uh-huh. However, when you go to Charlottesville, it's completely different than that, playing in camera. That place is a madhouse. It I mean, is. It, it may be the second best. Best atmosphere in, in in the ACC next to Cameron, and uh, I fully expect Virginia to do what they do: make threes, make that's the extra right. pass, make free throws, and be that, efficient on defense. The and that's fan tough base, to the players, everybody has bought into yeah. the system down there. Absolutely. <clears throat> Moving further down Tobacco Road, let's talk about the Wolf Pack. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> They are currently four and six. See what Carolina fans did to another night. Oh, they did. We're gonna get to that here in just a second. Four and six in the ACC. They're sixteen and seven overall. They've dropped out of the top twenty-five. Now they've actually got three losses in a row to Virginia, Uh who was ranked. Yeah. Who still is Virginia Tech, who was ranked. That's right. And UNC. That's right. Another night. Before we get to the Mm -hmm. UNC one though, Mm -hmm. we got. I'm sorry. I gotta bring up the fact that they only scored twenty-four points in a loss to Virginia Tech in a whole game. All right. By comparison. My son's rec ball team the other night scored 22 <laughs> in two 15-minute halves with running clocks. Yeah, there you go. I think that's the perfect <laughs> analogy. You know, NC State came into the game ranked 23rd, so they just uh-huh. barely scored a point per vote that they got the week oh, before. My God. That's and of terrible. course, you know, there's memes out there making fun of them. They deserve to be made fun of I a mean, little bit, right? T- that is. I'm sorry. That's funny. Yeah. I, I, you saw what Dion said that uh, all of them decided to join the bowling team. Yeah, it's time to move on to a different sport. <laughs> I mean, when I was looking up some of these stats, R.J. Barrett, who was the number one recruit out of high school that went to Duke, he's averaging 24 points a game by himself. <laughs> and NC State, pretty much, they didn't literally lay a goose egg, but they came uh, as close oh, as you yeah, can, right? It was, it was awful. Of course, Virginia Tech didn't do too much better. Yeah, they scored 48. <laughs> when I first saw this score, I was like, what is that, an old football score? Like, I really did. 47-24 is a football yeah, score. I was like... So, shame on them. Uh, And another thing I found funny, and I even commented on, it might have been Dion's thing. Of course, uh, UNC played them, uh, what was that, Tuesday night? Tuesday night, I believe it was. Tuesday night, Tar Heels put up 113 on them. Now, they gave up 96, which I was like, how does State go from 24 points to 96 points? Of course, Carolina didn't play much defense in the last 10 minutes of that game. They were playing a lot of subs and them. When they had to, I mean, they were up by 27 or 28 yeah. at one point in that game. That was game was never really close. It's 16 at halftime. Um, they still the, won by 17. Yeah, that's right. You and, know, and the Carolina fans stood up and applauded when they hit 25. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, did they? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, I love so, it. oh, yeah. The Carolina fans. I mean, yeah. I stood up when they scored. They were at 23 when they scored the basket to put them up 25. All the Carolina fans stood up and gave them an ovation. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Great troll. Now, just like with Virginia, when I was saying if you can score more than 60 on them, you're probably going to beat mm-hmm. them most times. I feel like with UNC, 
if they score over 100, they're going to win, right? That's right. They, they are. And, and, and they just – I mean, they have played so well lately. They have. Uh, before we move on to them, yeah, knock on that wood. Uh, NC State will be at Pitt on Saturday. So this might be an opportunity for them yeah. to get back on I think the winning side. I think, I think they'll win again. I think they will as well. And I'm pulling for them. You yeah. know, I won't that's pull right. for Duke, but I'll pull I, for that's State. Right. That's right. I'll pull for State. Until they play yeah, Carolina. Until they play Carolina. So speaking of the Tar Heels, they are also 8-1, and one, tied with Duke uh, in the ACC, 18-4 and four overall. Yep. Uh, they are currently ranked 8th in the nation. Uh, of course, they are the top-ranked four-loss team, mm-hmm. but, you know. That and they're like Michigan, surprising. Tennessee. Uh, uh, yeah. That's two of, two of the losses. Kentucky's the third one. Uh, Louisville is the fourth. So the Louisville was an aberration, but the, I mean, the other three are all against teams ranked ahead of them. Absolutely. And so. they beat Gonzaga. That's right. Who's and, in the top that's five. That's right. So uh, just like the Blue Devils, the Tar Heels have six wins in a row, including a revenge win over Louisville, right. 79 to 69. So they've already come back. Was on that last Saturday? That it game? was. was this that, past Saturday. That was, a, um, that was a, good, a good win for them. It was. Absolutely. Uh, so coming up next for them is going to be Miami at home Saturday. So they'll be playing okay. in Chapel Hill. And then they get Virginia at home on Tuesday. Virginia. Now, Miami's having a down year, so I'm assuming they'll win that one. But Virginia's going to be tough, right? I'm going to the Virginia game. Oh, are you? Yeah, somebody gave me tickets for Chris, but I cannot wait. Uh, take some pictures for the all sports right, my, show. All right, my daughter is going to leave early and go do a visit to the campus that day and then go to the game that night. Very cool. Let me ask you this. Have you right. been to the uh, the museum there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, yeah. I love it in there. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, well, you know what? Since you'll be there, hopefully that'll bring us some good luck and they'll that's be able right. to beat the Cavaliers. That's right. so, I hope so. Uh, because that would make us, at that point, They've never lost when I went. Me neither. Me oh, neither. really? Cool. Yeah, me yeah. neither. And I and uh, me and my best friend, we, we try to go every year, uh-huh. and they've never lost since we've been going. So, uh, But if they're to, able to beat Miami on Saturday, beat Virginia on Tuesday, that makes them 9-1 and one, or 10-1 and one in the mm-hmm. ACC, would make them 20-4 and four overall. Uh, you know, we've talked about the Dukes of the world, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Does Carolina right. have a legit shot at a number one seed come playoff? I've been March? thinking about this. If you had asked me two weeks ago, I'd have said no. I would have too. Um, but if they keep winning and they split with Duke – yeah, and perform well in ACC tournament. Well, that's a lot of ifs. Sure, um, but I think I think you could make a case for them. Now we've it seen depends on what the other teams do ahead of them. Absolutely, and we've seen plenty of times where um, one team will win the ACC regular season and mm-hmm. another team will that's win right. the tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like though, ninety nine times out of a hundred, whoever wins the ACC usually is going to have a that's number right. one seed. A really good shot at it. That's right. So, uh, it could be Duke, could be us, could be Virginia. Mm-hmm. We'll have to wait I mean, and see. So. I mean, literally, if. In a fantasy world, you could make a case for Virginia, Duke, and Carolina all being number one seed. Now, that's not going to happen. You could, yeah. That's not going to happen. Sure. They're, they're, but, I mean, they're all three that good when they're on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, last thing here before we move into our big impact and love it or hate it. So, we're talking about college basketball. Let's talk about college football. National Signing Day mm-hmm. was on Wednesday. That's right. Uh, and, of course, they had one, what was it, in December, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. which a lot of guys signed. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, as we currently sit, I've got the top ten. I'm going to run through it real quick, okay. and I just wanted to see if you agree with this. Okay. So, number one is Alabama. Mm-hmm. Does that surprise anybody? Not at all. Number two is Georgia. I don't think that surprises no. me. It may no. surprise no. you. Uh, number three was Texas. Texas coming in at number three. So, Herman, it feels like, you know, we talked about the, yeah. the ESPN way too early poll yeah. and Texas was in the top five or so. Yeah. And, and and you asked, you've asked a couple times if they were on the way back, if – if that's true, perhaps they are. That maybe they are. Uh, right behind them is their neighbor, Texas A&M, mm-hmm. uh, LSU five, and then after that, it's all the blue bloods: Oklahoma six, Oregon seven, Michigan eight, Florida nine, and Clemson ten. I was gonna say Clemson's not in there. Clemson is at ten. Now here's the thing: Clemson doesn't really need that's right. a lot of players. That's right. Uh, now I know they're losing a lot of defensive players, especially mm-hmm. off the line, but yep. they, on offense, they they're are stacked, stacked next oh my year. Gosh. Um, so I don't think even coming and, and in it 10 might, it might be, be one of those years where we don't know how hard he went after players because of how sure. stacked he was. Maybe they just don't flat out need guys yeah, except right. for depth. That's and, right. And even still, they're still in the top ten. Yeah, I mean, yeah, top ten is awful. By but the way. Uh, let's see. You know, I talk about all the time the SEC bias. Mm-hmm. I talked about it in that way too early mm-hmm. rankings. However, you can't make this stuff up. This mm-hmm. isn't opinionated. Yeah. So you got Bama, Georgia, A and M, LSU. So that's four in the top five, mm-hmm. and then you add Florida in there. So five out of the ten are SEC. That's right. Uh, two from the SEC East. So you know, yeah. their players want to play in the South, and if you'll notice, all of these teams are in the South except for Oregon and Michigan. Mm-hmm. So and of that's course, right. those are blue bloods, if you that's will. Right. Uh, here's another number I found interesting: UNC number thirty-three. 
you know, I had heard somewhere recently they were probably a top 35 recruit yeah. class. That's, that's excellent. I that's mean, what Mac, they need. Mac Brown's know hired a good staff. You know what? I sat here and I complained about Mac Brown being the coach and I didn't like mm, it. Me too. I'm still not fully on board with it, but if he can have a couple of good recruiting right. classes, there's no reason why UNC shouldn't be good at I football. Mean, and, they, and you know, he he has put together from by, by everything I've read, and I've read a pretty good bit on it recently. He's really put together a good staff. Yeah, he has. So, so has. I, I hopefully that'll be enough to get them respectable. I hope so. I hope so because I'd like to see us get back yeah, to 2015 State, where we were playing yeah. Clemson in the ACC yeah. championship. And Keenan State is a great place to go to a football. It game. is beautiful. Gosh, it, it actually won uh, Field of the Year last year. Oh, really? They had to win something. I wow, guess. Wow, that's right. <laughs> All right. Matter of fact, that was one of my big impacts one week. Okay. And that brings us to this week's All big right. impacts. Of course, brought to you by Richmond Community College, whose motto is "Local College, Big Impacts." Who you got this week, Brian? I have got. I won't call them all by name, but I have got the 12 Raiders. Who signed this week on National Signing Day? Yeah, absolutely. There uh, were a uh, bunch of them. There were a slew of them. That's awesome to the, all the coaching staffs across Richmond County. What a great job they do with these student athletes. I mean, who wouldn't want to play here? Yeah. And it wasn't just football either. I no, mean, that's it was right. Across, across, across the game, run the gamut. Yeah, across yeah. all sports. And of course, if you want to get all those names, you can find that on the RichmondObserver.com or you can go on the RO app, which is free. Right. So, my big impact Julius Peppers, finally retiring. Yeah. Going to retire as a Panther. Of course, yeah. was a Tar Heel through and through. Yeah. Uh, congratulations to Julius Peppers. You know what I read that I didn't realize? The Charlotte Bobcats were going to try him out for basketball. Really? Yeah. Well, he's a pretty good basketball player. He was. College. He was. Only player to ever play in a Super Bowl and a Final Four. Really? Uh-huh. That's unique. So <laughs> the, that makes it even more of a big a, impact. I loved Julius Peppers. Absolutely. Uh, and, of course, you know, I, I know he played for the Packers. Did he play for anybody else? Can you the remember? The Bears. I think the he Bears when the he Bears? left the Panthers the first time he went to the Bears and then the Packers and then back. But I was, you know, with him being a Tar Heel, being drafted by the Panthers, mm-hmm. like, what, number two overall, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly, yeah. I everybody wanted to see him come back, That's and right. he did. And he was still productive. And he was good last year, yep. Great career. I'm going to ask you again. First ballot. Okay. Ten, ten out of, and, and he'll go in as a Panther, I think, because 10 of his 17 yeah. years – or as a Panther. I don't think he would uh, even have to think yeah, about it. I, I, no, as a no-brainer. To him I, I agree. I think he's first ballot and will yep. be in uh, whenever he's eligible. Yep. Speaking of that, uh, kind of an extra big mm-hmm. impact. Champ Bailey, Tony Gonzalez, and Ed Reed were That's selected to the 2019 NFL congrats. Class Hall of Fame. All deserving. All absolutely deserving. And I'll throw in a Cowboys plug. Gil Brandt in the contributors category. He was, oh, okay. He, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. he was the modern scout and first one to use computerized techniques for scouting. And a lot of things they do today were because he started them. He scouted for the Ooh. Cowboys from 60 to 89. He changed the game, yeah, he, literally. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, And I, of course, have a little bit more of a soft yeah. spot for Champ Bailey being yeah. a former Red Champ Bailey was a great, great college player and pro player. He was. What was that, Georgia? Yeah. He played at Georgia? Uh, and, of course, Ed Reed was part of those great Miami Ooh. teams. Ooh. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I can't remember where Gonzalez went to, went to I college. Don't rem- I don't remember. But uh, one of the greatest tight ends of yeah, all time. that's easy. right. So, congratulations to yeah. all three of them. All deserving. Absolutely. So, let's hit our love it or hate it. Let's all run right. through these real quick. First up, your Dallas Cowboys, unlikely to extend Coach Jason Garrett's contract. Love it or hate it. I knew you were going to say love it. <laughs> love it. And you know what I heard this week? My daughter texted it to me one day this week, as a matter of fact. She said that – she read that the Cowboys are going to make a play for Sean Payton in 2020. Really? Well, yeah, he's got a house does, in Dallas. Does his Saints contract run out then? I, I guess, and and, and yeah, he's um he, and he's got a house in Dallas. You know, he, he started as an assistant for Parcells. Well, not started, but he, one of his jobs. Was, yeah. And, and rumor always was he would come back to Dallas, and then they gave Garrett a hundred year contract, so it didn't yeah. work out. So, um, yeah, hasn't there been rumors of Sean Payton coming to Dallas? There before? have. Now, when he bought the house in Dallas, I'm afraid yeah. everybody said, "Well, he's coming here to be the general manager," and of course that was. A, Baloney, but uh, uh, picking back off of this, what's your take on Kellen Moore becoming the offensive coordinator? Former, you know former quarterback at Boise, not really much to great, do in the NFL. Yeah, great college player. Um, Dak Prescott loves him. Yeah. So I think this is more about pleasing Dak Prescott, who they're getting ready to extend. Who knows? Could, could he, he can't be worse than Lanahan. Could I he mean, potentially move up and be be coach? I mean, he's twenty nine years old. I don't and, see. What, yeah, and guys are looking for young right. after yep. Sean McVay's success. Yeah. So, so who knows if he's got any coaching? But his dad was a successful coach, and I think maybe his uncle was a successful coach at the high school and college levels. I think high school levels. But um. Yeah. But it, so it's in his blood, and and Dak Prescott calls him a genius. Well, there you go. So and, we'll uh, see. As long as you keep the quarterback right. happy, everybody's right. happy. Speaking of young coaches, the uh, Cincinnati Bengals have named Rams uh, quarterback coach Zach Taylor to be their new head coach. Now, 
Uh, before I get your love it or hate it here, a couple things that I noticed. Uh, first of all, with the Cowboys, I love it because mm-hmm. anything that, yeah. that takes the Cowboys down a notch, I'm good with. <laughs> uh, but first of all, it kind of surprised me that the Bengals moved on from Marvin Lewis because mm-hmm. he'd been there for so yeah. long. But this is one of those examples where they, everybody sees the success that a young coach like Sean McVay has, and so now everybody's looking for the next Sean McVay. Do they have it with Zach Taylor, you think? Remains to be seen. I don't know anything about Zach Taylor, um, so I, I hate to say love it. Um, I just think because it's such a copycat league, you're going to see everybody try to hire the next 30-year-old, and yeah. who, know, who knows, some of them, one or two of them are hit, and the rest of them will be flops. Exactly, and we've seen that all the time, yeah, no matter right. what it is. Um, Zach Taylor, I'm assuming, is good at his job. You see what he did with Jared Goff. Of course, I think Sean McVay is as much a part of that That's as right. anything because Jared Goff's first season, mm-hmm. uh, when uh, I can't even remember his name, was, yeah. was the coach. They were terrible. Uh-huh. Nick That's Foles right. was there, and too, it, and, and he, he was, was terrible. And he was being called a bus, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Goff was being yeah. called a bus. And then McVay comes in, That's right. and Foles goes to uh, the Eagles, and they both are really yeah. good now. So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm good with that. Speaking of Nick Foles, we're going to segue very okay. smoothly here. The nice. Eagles are expected to franchise and then trade Nick Foles. Yeah, hate it. I hate I, I I hate the way the situation's playing out for Foles. Um, although they picked up the option and he dropped and he declined, and he which paid cost that two, paid million two million check. dollars. Yeah. Two, two million dollars to to get. He's. I wish they just wouldn't have renewed him for his sake. If they're not, if they've already made a commitment and they have to wince. And I get it. It's a business. You got to do what's best for you. And and he's a good insurance policy. But I mean, really, the average the average franchise fee for I mean uh, franchise tag costs for a quarterback. His twenty five million. It's up there, yeah. So, so as and, I know, as a Redskins yeah, fan, twenty five million, <laughs> and it only and, goes up. That's right, and and they may get a third. And the asking price we're saying is a third round pick. Well, you know, I hope the Redskins come calling because they could do a lot better than what we've currently got. Nick I Foles. Agree. You know, I would almost make a case that maybe the Eagles should move on from Carson Wentz and keep Nick Foles and, until he, he won pro- you a Super Bowl. Until he proves he can't win, I don't. I, yeah. I mean, you know what? A lot of people criticize Brady. I mean, the Patriots for dumping Garoppolo. Yeah, because because Brady didn't, for whatever reason, Brady denies it. But there, a little bit of insecurity they were grappling. They dumped him, and everybody said, "Well, that you know, you're just catering to Kate, Brady, who's 40." Well, Brady just won another Super yeah. Bowl. So, I mean, yeah, I think you so, needed to cater so, to him, so, right? Um, and Garoppolo didn't even play. Yeah. Oh. However, um, Carson Wentz didn't win a Super that's Bowl. That's right. And, and I feel like there's also been rumblings that he's not a very good teammate. That's why he even said this week that he um, that he. Couldn't have improved some of the things yeah. that he didn't. He didn't outright call the story a lie, and yeah. he said. And he said he would. He said he could certainly work on that. He had struggled with some things because he was you know, dealing with another major injury and probably sure. didn't handle it the best. But it, it but sounds I mean, like uh, they're going to move on from Foles, and I would imagine he's going to have a lot of takers. That's right. So oh, without a doubt, they may have their pick of the litter when yeah. it comes to trading him. Yeah. Uh, let's head back to baseball. Nolan Arenado and the Rockies have agreed to a twenty-six million dollar one-year deal. Because he hit uh, arbitration, so they had to pay him. Uh, love it or hate it? Hate it. Twenty six million. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're handing over Josh Donaldson twenty three million. True. He came off an injury. True. True. I mean, I guess when I hear these numbers, I just I, yeah. they just sound so ridiculous. It does, but it's really but, not. Uh, but but in today's market, is I mean, I remember I got an issue of Sports Illustrated when I was a boy, and they had everybody on the cover that made a million dollars a year. Yeah. Now, see, I remember. Um, when Kevin Brown became the first $100 million oh my guy gosh, with the Dodgers. the Dodgers. And I thought to myself, I can't believe yeah. that they're paying these guys this much money. And now there's 30 guys in the league that make right. $100 million. That's right. So, so I guess when you look at it like that, maybe I'm just being old-fashioned. And this is what I was kind of referring to when I was talking about yeah, Manny and Bryce, year. where, I mean, Arenado, I feel like he's kind of on that level himself, he's right? Good, he's definitely a good player. I'm not knocking yeah. him. I just seem to... let, let, let me ask you this uh, before we move on. So... The Yankees. Now we keep talking. Will they? Will they sign Bryce? Will they sign Manny? Probably won't sign Manny because they've signed former Rocky yeah. Troy Tulowitzki. That's right. And they've signed former Rocky DJ LeMahieu. That's right. Could they ev- uh, eventually sign former Rocky Nolan Arenado to man third base? Well, they can afford it. They can. And, and uh, yeah, if it's a one-year deal, then I mean, you know, the Yankees are one team that's not scared to spend money. No, they're not. Uh, that they'll throw they'll throw the money at and they'll stack the roster. And on so, top of that, it, it Brian Cashman has done a really good job of not only getting under the luxury yep. tax, but that's also right. developing yeah. some players. And, he, and he's not just throwing money around. Right. I mean, he's a very good general manager. Yeah. I mean, because when I know Hal Steinbrenner is completely different from his father, mm-hmm. and I used to give Yankee fans crap all the time. I yeah. say, well, you guys just bought a championship because right. they did. That's right. Now they don't do that as that's, much. They do have they do have a good minor league system. They yeah. produce some. They grow some of their own, and they. 
but they're not scared to go out and get the big name no. either. And it's the teams like that, the Cubs, the Red Sox, the Dodgers, who not only have good farm systems mm-hmm. but have money to spend. That's and those right. are the most dangerous teams out That's there right. that can do it all. That's right. Uh, sticking with baseball, the Texas Rangers are set to move into a new stadium in 2020, and okay. the stadium is going to have synthetic turf instead of grass. Love it or hate it? I hate it. I'm a purist. I like grass. I'm the same way. Uh, you know the other, the other uh, uh, place that has this turf? Mm-hmm. Tropicana Field. Oh. That should tell you all you need to know. Oh, what a dumb I'm sorry, you know, there's two of them. The other one's the uh, Toronto, where they play, the Spectre oh, wow. Center. Ooh, ooh. Which are, which are indoor domes yeah. that have been there for quite a while. That's right, and Tropicana Field is a toilet bowl. I'm it sorry. Is. It's, it's <laughs> terrible. So it's terrible. Sorry. They should burn it down. Um, but as far as this, this is a brand new stadium, so I would imagine this synthetic turf is going to be a little more advanced than Maybe. what you see in Tampa Bay. I'm However, trying. Guys talked about all the time when they had artificial turf and like all those domes, the Astrodome, about how it was so bad on your legs. I feel like this is the same thing. Right. Why would you want to play on that? That's right. I mean, gra- grass is so much better for your yeah. career and your knees. When you're and, diving. That's right. You know? That's right. So I hate this. Uh, moving on to basketball. The uh, Celtics and the Knicks played earlier, or last week rather. And uh, when they were introducing the Celtics, Kyrie Irving came out and the Madison Square Garden crowd cheered him. During intros. I did not know that. <laughs> now, he's eligible for free agency mm-hmm. coming up soon. Yeah. Love it or hate it? Um, I love it. I, yeah, they're, they're, you know, Knicks fans are doing their part. I mean, Knicks, Knicks, Knicks fans are kind of like Cleveland Browns fans in football. <laughs> I, They constantly have great crowds, no matter how bad they are. Yeah, they and, do. And so um, – so uh, good for them trying trying to influence the situation if they can. If, yeah, you know they're they're going to have the money since the la- the last trade they made to go get two max two max free agents. You just took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, in trading Kristaps Porzingis mm-hmm. to the Mavericks and also getting back Dennis Smith Jr. Right. who's a really who's good not player. a bad basketball no, player. No, no, I, I feel <laughs> it's like it's not like they come away empty handed off the bat. You know, I, when I first heard it, I was like, oh, the Knicks are being the Knicks. Mm-hmm. But yeah. looking back, I think they won this trade mm-hmm. because they got a young, controllable player yeah. in Dennis Smith Jr. That's right. Now you handed over Porzingis, but he's also been injured for the Who last also year and a half. Who also didn't want to be there and didn't was hurt anyway. There. And as you mentioned, it now opens up New York to be able to sign two max guys, whether that be Kyrie and, and Kevin Durant uh-huh. or whoever it may yeah. be. Yeah. Um, Anthony Davis. We That's don't right. know yet. Hopefully um, not Kemba. No, hopefully not. But guys, do you think guys still want to go and play for the Knicks? Because they haven't I, been good in quite a while. I think, you know, they were rumored to be so dysfunctional and rightfully so. I think if I think if they get one. It'll be a lot easier to get two, sure. and, Dennis, and Dennis Smith's a good player. I mean, that, you know, it depends on how they draft and who's their coach. I don't even know who their coach is now. I don't know. I, yeah, I, so, uh, um, um, Phil so, Jackson. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, I really think people people like to play in Madison Square Garden, and you know, yeah. New York. I think New York is, sells itself. It does. Great city. It does. And to piggyback off of that, Forbes magazine came out and said that the Knicks are the most valuable NBA team at four billion dollars. Wow. So I don't know if that's necessarily love it or hate it, but uh, even Shocking. though even though they've been terrible since basically Allen Houston yeah. and them were there and Latrell. Sprewell, yeah. they're still the most valuable franchise in the NBA. That's, that's truly shocking. I figured it was the Lakers. Oh, yeah. Without you know, doubt. Especially with LeBron there. Yeah. But, nope, it wow. is the Knicks. Uh, let's see. Let's stick with the NBA. So, LeVar Ball, love him or hate him, you know, I hate him personally. Right. Uh, has, a has a little too much control over what his kids do, mm-hmm. but he doesn't want Lonzo to be traded to New Orleans. Of course, there's all this talk about Anthony Davis mm-hmm. being traded to the Lakers, mm-hmm. although that's tempered off a little mm-hmm. bit. Uh, and, of course, by this point, the NBA trade deadline, deadline has already passed. We'll update everybody on that when we get to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what do you think about LeVar Ball saying, well, I don't want my son to go to New Orleans? I hate it. Yeah. Hate it. I, shut up. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I hate uh, it, too. He, and sorry, he, he actually sorry. said that if he gets traded, he wants his son to go to Phoenix. But my thing is, is like, look, they don't. Phoenix. They don't care what you think. I know. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Let's go make sure Lamar Ball is happy when we make this. Exactly. Show. Yeah. Let, let's <laughs> let's let's check that off first before we worry about our yeah, team. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Lavar Ball can, yeah. you know, go walk off a cliff somewhere. Go play Jordan one on one. See how to tell. Right. See how. Yeah. <laughs> bad that turns out for him. Uh, a couple more here. So Tony Romo, we talked about him earlier. He's actually going to be playing in the Pebble Beach Pro Am. He's a very good golfer. He is. He qualified for a pro tournament last year. He did. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's actually going to be playing with hand me down clubs from Tiger and Jordan Spieth. Love it or hate I it. love that. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. uh, if you're going to get hand me down clubs, yeah, you can do a lot I mean, worse, I, right? Jordan Spieth and Tiger Woods. That's yeah, awesome. I completely agree. Uh, let's go to basketball here. Marcus Saul from the Memphis Grizzlies mm-hmm. is expected to be traded to the Charlotte Hornets. Love it or hate it. That was announced yesterday. I did not know that. Yeah. Uh, depends, love it depending on what they give up. True. I would imagine this may be a salary dump situation, mm-hmm. and I'm not really sure that Marcus Gasol is as good as he was a few years mm-hmm. ago. 
But isn't this the kind of move that they need to make? We've been talking mm-hmm. so long about how give Kimba some help. Mm-hmm. Is Gasol it, potentially? He's he, he still got some left in the tank. Obviously not to Gasol three or four years ago. But good player. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, as I long would, as you don't uh, give up the franchise for him. No, I mean, no. I now, if they want to take on uh, Nicholas Nick Batum, Batum. <laughs> we'll trade that straight up, it, right? <laughs> uh, finally finishing up with basketball, Jalen Rose came out and said that Zion Williamson will not be good enough to win an NBA MVP. Love it or hate it? Hate it. He doesn't know that. Nobody hey, can tell that you yet. Can't, hey, yeah, you can't no, know He's that. 18. Um, Get we, off his back a little bit. We won't know, obviously, till he gets in the That's NBA. Right. He may be the next LeBron. He may flop. You really That's don't right. know. He may, he may be the next – Whoever. He will, however, probably be the number one draft pick, right? That's right. Which means he's probably going to go to – he may go to the Cavs, for all we know. Um, However, I don't know that the LeBron comparisons are right or Mm -hmm. fair Mm -hmm. because I think this kid is not on LeBron's level personally, and it's got nothing to do with him playing for Duke. Uh, And he may improve. You know, I just think uh, he needs to improve on his shooting. Passing out yeah. of double teams, that sort of thing. Yeah, he's 6'8". Is that right? He's 6'8". Something like He's so, pretty much the same size as LeBron. So, I mean, great player, great college player. But in the NBA, you just can't go in at 6'8 and dunk over everybody. Exactly, it, which it, is what he's been doing yeah, his whole right. career, that's especially right. in high school. That's right. So. Uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah. uh, as far as that, I, I hate it. Jalen, yeah. I think that was just more to make a yeah. soundbite. And I like Jalen Rose, by the I way. Too. I think he's a very knowledgeable NBA analyst, Absolutely. but I hate that comment. I think that was just to, to spark yes. a debate. Yeah, that's so. right. And then finally, new Carolina Panthers. Well, it's actually not new now, but per- Carolina Panthers owner David Tepper has hinted at a possible Bank of America stadium roof. Love it or hate it? Hate it. Really? I do. Believe it or not, I love I love being outdoors. At a football game, and 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 the, and the elements. Now, if it's retractable, yeah, which it may be. If it's retractable, and you're only going to do it if it's icy and snowing, then then I get it. Then I get it. But that's America. I don't know. I, I agree I with I agree football. with you about being out in the elements. Uh-huh. However, Charlotte, and we've talked about this several times. Charlotte is desperate to get a Super Bowl. And NFL right. has basically told them your stadium's not good enough to have a Super now, Bowl. If it gets them a Super Bowl, then right. Well, I think that's ultimately what they're okay. thinking is. Okay. Now, my thing is, Charles well, a good enough city for a Super Bowl. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. it could handle the yeah. the, the people yeah. and all that. I'm gonna use uh, the Cowboys Stadium as an example. Mm-hmm. When Jerry built that, it cost a billion dollars. Bill, a bill. Yeah. Now I'm not sure how much of that was the roof, mm-hmm. but I feel like if you're gonna put a roof on Bank of America, why not just build a whole new stadium? That's right. Oh, that's a good point because that stadium, although it's still very not, excuse me, very nice. Um, it's been there since what, 95? 95, 96? yeah. So no, I mean, maybe maybe 94. Yeah. So it's a, so if you're gonna do that, depend on how much the price difference will be. Why not look at it? Yeah. And again. Um, we've, we've talked about this, and we actually put out a poll one time about should if the Panthers were to get a new stadium, should uh, Mecklenburg County be on the hook, which a lot of times we see that happen, mm-hmm. or should David Tepper, who is a multi-multi-billionaire, chip in some money, or think, a little bit of both? I think I mean, I tell you what, Jerry Richardson gets criticized for the way his career ended, and rightfully so. Yeah. Uh, but when he started, he that um, the way he did it, I don't think they got one dime of money. I could be oh, wrong. Okay. Right. I, I, I could be wrong about that, but I think he built it all off the um, PSLs. Okay. Yeah. And, and so I'm a fan. You know, not that it affects me one way or another. I don't live in Mecklenburg County, but right. Yeah, but but I, part of me hates tax increases for sports. Yeah, teams, and I hate to. Billionaires. I hate to use the Braves as, as an example, but when they, I mean, Turner Field was barely 20 years old, and then they moved to Cobb County and basically made Cobb County pay for all of that. And a lot of people there were upset about mm-hmm. it, and rightfully so, yep. because it's like, well, look, I didn't ask for you to, some people track, right. I didn't ask for you to raise my taxes to bring this here. Yep. And I can see where people in the Charlotte area would say the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, we talked about this as well, about how sometimes NFL owners will use moving as, as, a, as a leverage as yep. leverage mm-hmm. to get a new stadium. And now, I don't, I don't necessarily see Tepper doing that, because for the longest time, the threat was we're going to move to California, we're going to move to LA. Well, now there's two teams there, yeah. so you don't yeah, need to so do that's that. That's not really on the table for them. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, but you know, if they want to build a stadium roof, have at it, especially if it's going to get you a Super Bowl yeah. slash WrestleMania. <laughs> WrestleMania, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, which to me and Russell's almost that's on right. the same level. So. Uh, anyway, that's going to do it for this edition of uh, forgot the name of the show. I must have loved or hated <laughs> of the Ross Rundown. Whew, it's been a long day. <laughs> Uh, so, of course, we appreciate everybody tuning in to this show, every show that we have across all of the Richmond Observer platforms each and every week. This is the first show after our one-year anniversary, right. so it's been fun. Looking forward to another 365. Right. So, I'm Matt Harrelson. That's Brand Fall. We'll see you right back here next week for another edition of the Ross Rundown. 